Welcome. This is Brian Buchanan and Jean Deschamps from the University of Alberta, Department of Critical Care Medicine. Welcome to this video tutorial on lung ultrasound to detect interstitial disease and consolidation. Lung ultrasound can be a powerful diagnostic and monitoring tool in the ICU, and the ACCP accordingly highlights it as a core competence for basic critical care ultrasonography competency. Go. The learning outcomes of this session will be to review the basic concepts of lung ultrasound physics and technique, identify relevant findings and have a systematic approach of interstitial patterns, consolidations. The power of lung ultrasound to discriminate normal and abnormal lung tissue stems from this fact. As the septa widen in front from either hydrostatic or inflammatory fluid infiltration, these septa then fall within the resolution of ultrasound, allowing propagation of the ultrasound waves. The presence of air coexisting with the septa lead to the typical B-line artifact. The characteristics of B-line artifacts are that they ablate A-lines, where they cross them, they start at the pleural line in the near field, and move all the way down to the far field, and they in fact move with lung sliding. As we talked about before, they also mean that there cannot be a pneumothorax at this interface. As interstitial thickening worsens, or some alveolar fluid accumulation occurs, the B-line coalesce into thicker bands as seen above. This is sometimes referred to as lung rockets. Finally, when uh, air is completely absent from the alveoli, B-lines disappear and are replaced by consolidation, such as in this clip. There are other lines that can be confused with B-lines. These are called Z-lines. These are very short. They, co they go from the pleural line, but they don't extend into the far field. They also don't ablate A-lines, but they do still move with lung sliding. These lines are really yet to be of determined significance at this point in time. There are some important caveats to B lines. While most people associate them with pulmonary edema, they represent sort, any sort of interstitial thickening. There are some important caveats to B lines. While most people associate them with pulmonary edema, they represent any sort of interstitial thickening. Other characteristics and contexts are critical in the setting. Notably, B lines can be su normal, such as in dependent areas subject to mild atelectasis. Acute bilateral B lines can also represent non cardiogenic pulmonema. Local processes can produce them, such as uh, early pneumonia, and they can be obliterated by positive pressure ventilation in some cases, despite being the initiating cause of respiratory failure. Most people associate the interstitial pattern of lung ultrasound to pulmonary edema, but there are countless etiologies associated to it, notably ARDS and interstitial lung disease. This is pretty close to what chest X-ray and CT often report as, as being interstitial type syndromes. In the appropriate context, however, lung ultrasound far outperforms chest X-ray, such as in pulmonary edema, where the presence of acute bilateral diffuse lines is highly predictive. In fact, a recent systematic review in JAMA revealed that in 100 patients with acute pulmonary edema, lung ultrasound will diagnose 15 more than chest X-ray will. Many nuances go into interpretation of lung ultrasound, and these are three key ones. Is the onset acute or chronic, which is partly based on clinical history, but also sequential exams? Is the distribution local or diffuse, which requires a full exam? And is the pleura sliding, or is it not? Or are there areas where the lung is, the lung is spared? The three mo most common causes of extensive B-lines or interstitial pattern are cardiogenic, or non-cardiogenic edema, as well as interstitial lung disease. Both types of edema tend to be diffuse, while interstitial lung disease is extensive but often patchy. An often underappreciated feature is also pleural sliding and texture. In inflammatory or fibrotic processes, the pleura is often irregular, non-homogeneous, and non-sliding. This is frequently patchy rather than diffuse. Cardiogenic pulmonary edema usually maintains lung sliding. Scanning the heart can be a really useful adjunctive test. A patient with a previously newly depressed left ventricular ejection fraction and now B lines with a corresponding clinical history has a significantly increased likelihood of cardiogenic pulmonary edema. The development of a consolidation is usually not appreciated on chest X-ray, but can be tracked on ultrasound. The pathophysiology behind this is the progressive reduction in aeration. This progressive reduction in aeration leads to the eventual formation of B-lines, which then coalesce 
as we can see here in B. In C, we see a severely reduced aeration, which may be accompanied by lung sliding. And then finally, as we see complete collapse, the lung becomes homogeneous or tissue-like. An underappreciated feature is progressive decrease in lung sliding. This is secondary to inflammation that essentially fuses the pleura, but may also be due to local decreased lung expansion or insufflation. This can sometimes be helpful in multifocal pneumonia to, to differentiate it from cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Consolidations can look like hepatized lung on ultrasound. However, a consolidation without surrounding fluid can be difficult to identify properly. A standardized view is critical. Ensure that the probe marker is cephalad or towards the head and that the screen marker is on the left. Identify the diaphragm well to establish what is pleural and the abdominal cavity. The main distinguishing feature other than the diaphragm is the bright punctiform lesions that represent air-filled bronchioles surrounded by tissue and anechoic pulmonary vasculature. It can be challenging to, to differentiate consolidation versus atelectasis. In one case, for example, on x-ray, we may, we may actually see air bronchograms. These can actually be occasionally displayed on ultrasound in select patients. In this example, we see very heavy consolidation, and we see these branching, scintillating, hyperchoic artifacts here, which is actually air-filled bronchioles. And these are air columns that are moving with, with breathing. This really is highly specific for pneumonia or, or infective consolidation. You may often see on occasion that there are, there are linear anechoic tubes that represent the paired bronchial vasculature. Conversely, there are static air bronchograms that offer no such dynamic movement as there, there is air in the bronchioles, but this air is not flowing. This is often due to significant atelectasis which means the bronchial tree is not connected to the main tracheobronchial tree and sees no airflow. Dynamic air bronchograms have significant limitations. One, is, one of them is that they are uncommonly seen. When they are seen, they have a good positive predictive value and good specificity. However, they lack sensitivity and have a poor negative predictive value. Therefore, their absence is not helpful. In summary... Lung ultrasound is simple, fast, repeatable, and non-invasive, but you have to interpret everything in context and be quite vigilant. In this tutorial, we have explored different presentations of interstitial lung patterns as well as consolidation. We'd like to thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.